So um, we had a DDoS again. Hooray! Hands up if you've ever been DDoSed or you've had some sort of nightmare security issue. Keep your hand up if you're in marketing. Yeah, okay. Will. Yeah. We thought you were in LAN engineering, but um, so, so um, actually this slide deck, think the table there, we kind of crowd, I, I kind of volunteered this and didn't do it, so we kind of crowdsourced uh, the slide deck. Um, I thought we, we actually we just had a, an interesting conversation about how qual you know how will this work how will the quality be and, and I mentioned earlier and other speakers have mentioned that you know it, our service the network just has to work now there's no ifs or buts you know 20 years ago when we turned on modems and daemon you know if it worked it was a bonus quite frankly right um, if it didn't well you just you know you put the TV on again and watched Open University so <laughs> it, it 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 really is um, it just has to work. There is no exceptions, and and and, and again, in our, we're fortunate in the UK, and we really are fortunate that we have huge competition. So when it doesn't work, people go somewhere else. You know, if we lose a customer, we'll lose it to Virgin or Sky. It is super difficult to ever win that customer back, and and as an industry, I think we're failing on this. And and I'm you know as guilty as everyone else. But here's the big network attack cycle. Huge attack happens. We all waste money dealing with it. We all go on, why don't we do BCP38? It'll be awesome. The world will be brilliant. Nothing happens. Ten years later, we have another big freaking attack, and we're all saying the same thing. Guys, can we break the cycle, please? It is, it is getting boring. It is making us more difficult to be seen as a mature industry. This is, this is kind of bread and butter hygiene for us, and, and it's really time that we faced into this issue. And, and actually, BCP38 is one part of it. There's other stuff. There's BGP hygiene. There's right database hygiene. There's peering database hygiene. This is, it's not optional, guys. It's really, really uh, important that we do it. So I'm going to cover a little bit about BCP38. What is it? Um, really, BCP38 is trying to stop spoof traffic getting into the network. It's as simple as that. The benefit, if, if everyone deployed BCP38 tomorrow, It'd be really great because if you saw traffic from a certain IP address, it would be 100% traceable. Today, you can fire up something, fire traffic into a random uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, spoof the address, no one knew, knows who it was or where it came from. You know, the plausible de deniability in the, IP, in the internet network exists today. And considering how much commerce and the fact that it pays all of our bills in this room, you know, that's, uh, in my mind, that's just not something that's good enough. Um, the other thing is, is that you know, you could, your customers, who are typically a, a lot of the times not technical people, you know, they get hacked. They have botnets. They have other stuff going on in their network, and it actually drives cost in your network because they become a DDoS source, and it, it, it hits your transit provider or your router blows up or something happens, and it drives cost or churn in your network. Um, as an industry, it costs us more money. You know. I don't know how many people in the last couple of attacks were, you know, at the weekend had people dialing in and claiming overtime because they were having to deal with, with, with some incidents. Um, and also the government have started to kind of, oh, what's this then? Do we need to do something? Go away, government. We don't want you here. Um, so, so this really is hygiene, hygiene from, you know, it's a real hygiene factor that we deploy um, BCP38. Um, here's an example, thanks to Dave. Um, you're... I'm a customer called Funet. I want to filter all of everything except Funet stuff. Sounds really easy, right? I don't want Funet sending me stuff from Nortel's IP addresses. I don't want Funet sending me stuff from my IP address. I just want them sending the stuff that is theirs. Sounds really simple, is really simple, is worth doing. Um, I'm going to put my BT hat back on for a minute. We are not, we are not um, innocent in this. I promise you when I stand on this stage in a year's time, we will be. And, and I've done this before on aggregation. We're driving a program to get this deployed across everywhere in BT as fast as we can because it's, it, the impact of it is just too big for us. Um, I like, like everyone else who runs a network to kind of go away with that commitment as well, please. Um, and and we'll, uh, we'll hand out prizes in a year's time. Um, Andy's paying, sorry, um, Will's paying because he's in marketing. Um, there's, another, there's another aspect to this. Sometimes it's useful to log this to see what's actually going on in the customer network. 
This is a service you can sell to the customer. Oh, customer, do you know that you've got all this wacky traffic in your network? Customers love that shit. They really love it. Um, but beware, if they're doing crazy things, you might need a big logging server. Um, where do you need to do this? Your PE devices, your access devices, your BRAS devices, um, you know, all the big vendors support doing simple filters. Um, you know, Alcatel, Cisco, Luce, um, uh, Juniper, they all support it. Um, any cloud providers or data center guys in the room? Nope, a couple. No one admitting it. No one brave enough. Oh, yep. Um, this is where I think we're seeing a real increase, and, and it's probably not a great surprise because it's a bit of a newer part of our industry. Um, it's really easy to write a script and fire up 100 VMs on five different cloud providers and use it to generate an attack. Really easy. Because every, everyone's standardizing on the same way of firing up a VM. So cloud providers, data center providers, if you're offering you know, managed kind of hosting services, on the, on the default gateway for those hosting services or on the VMs if it's platform as a service, um, you need to make sure that you're filtering this as well. Most new attacks are coming from this. Um, one thing to be wary of, if, you're a tran if you are a transit ISP or your customers are transit ISP, you need to figure out the best way of deploying this because there are some gotchas. Um, the, the best way is if, you, if you're a transit provider to try and make it a T and C issue. That's difficult. Um, you know, we'll let you connect, but you've got to make sure you've done this. Um, if you're in bids and tenders with corporates or government, government love it when you say we do this. I mean, it's like, yes, ticking the box on security. It's just another way of selling stuff. Just a, a comment. Um, the, the, this is a, a picture that the guys at Prolexic sent me. Um, Jay sent it to me. Um, y y this is one of, one of the attacks that happened. Um, that's what they saw on it. Um, <laughs> You know, 180 gig, it's pretty significant. Hands up if you've got 180 gig in your backbone. Patrick, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do as well, but I, was, I thought there'd be nobody. But, I mean, genuinely, you know, this is costing you money. If that's going over your transit provider, your 95th percent will just jumped some, at some level. Um, the interesting thing about this issue is, and, and we've done some, on some of the stuff we saw at BT and, and, and this, Actually, the, the, the attack was actually generated from non-spoofed IP addresses. Um, and that goes back to my point about cloud providers, which is where we think most of this came from. So it really is important that we all, every part of our industry, um, tackles this head on. Um, other, so there's other, some other wider network hygiene. Um, if I can't spell hygiene wrong, apologies. Um, open resolvers. Um, probably Keith can give you the biggest lecture on that in the world. Um, he's an expert in this field. It's really easy to fix open resolvers. There's no reason for it whatsoever. Um, you know, it is painful. It, it generates a, a, attacks. Have a look at open resolver project. Put your IP's address. Find out where they are on your network. And please, please, please fix them. A couple other things. MIT have a, have a, 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 a tool set that you can use to generate, to test whether you're spoofable or not. Um, Nico at Cole, um, on his security website, it's a bit out of date now, but, but um, Nico put a great presentation on basic hygiene factors of, of network security, how you secure OSPF, how you secure ISIS, how you secure BGP. Some of that's a little bit out of date, but most, most of the concept Nico talks about um, are really great. Uh, Daniel wrote a paper on the benefits of BCP38 that you can wave in front of your market and people to get time. And, and I've already mentioned uh, Open Resolver. That's the presentation, guys. Don't go away and think, yeah, I'll do that next week. Go away and think, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Um, it's a real, real part of, of our industry gr growing up and becoming a mature, reliable platform that people can live, work, and play on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions? I'm just going to take this chance to shamelessly plug um, my day job, um, DNS Work, where we're concerned about a whole bunch of issues protecting the DNS infrastructure, including dealing with the open resolver issue. Our next workshop is in Dublin the day before the right meeting, so um, please consider attending that. Um, we, we need all the help we can get on this issue. Um, so, having done that, any questions for Neil? Great. Uh, not a question, actually, just to follow up on the open resolver project. 
Uh, if you're an ASN operator, which most of us here are, um, you'll find that the default search on that site only allows you to search an individual slash 24 at a time. But if you contact the site admin on the email address that's on the front of that site with, from a work email address, he'll supply you with the URL where you can actually do a whole ASN search, oh, cool. which would save you a lot of time. Thanks for that. Thank you. Any other questions? Mike. I mean, just, just to kind of endorse your point about, you know, where on earth else are DDoS attacks coming from if they're not coming out of data centers? So, you know, the interface between the occupants and the shared networks within a data center, I mean, have, I mean is something that's going to be rather crucial going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, these guys are, you know, the people that do this stuff, they're not idiots, right? They're smart guys. Um, you know, we'll plug holes, they'll find other holes. We need to keep plugging them. But this, you know, I remember standing up 10 years ago at a Lynx meeting or some other meeting saying, please deploy PCP38. And we just haven't <coughs> done it. It's very depressing. I really don't want to be standing here in 10 years talking about this again, please, guys. We need to get it sorted. Our customers, you know, if we talked about how bad this was to our customers, you know, they'd be running out the building saying, are you guys nuts? And it's not that difficult. There's, you know, there's stuff that you do today to manage your IP address space, adding a little bit of code or a script to do this is a no-brainer. And uh, you see, I mean, I, th I think what's uh, you know, revisiting, you know, 10 or more years ago, well, there were virtually no networks in a certain sense within the data center. They were all self-contained to, yep. to each occupier. But now the, now the data center network's becoming such a significant part, and you know, that has to be of at least as good a quality as anything else. Absolutely, could agree more. And and, and one one I think one other thing is is um, you know the the other thing to think about is is how do you handle a DDoS? Do you have the right contacts in your upstreams? Do you have the right knowledge? Do you have the right skills? You know, I, I keep finding you know occasion people are kind of learning this as they go along. Trust me, I've, as someone who learned it as they went along, you will probably want to try and read more about this and understand it. Question here. Uh, Simon Kelly, um, I'm author of DNS Mask, which turns up in the list of open resolvers that on the open resolver project rather a lot. Yeah. Um, now, clearly, I assert this is because people haven't configured it properly rather than there are bugs in it. Yeah. But one thing that was very interesting to me is there are more instances of a version that was released 10 years ago yeah. than of yeah. the current the current release of the code. Yeah. So if there are bugs in that stuff, then I'll fix them. But the infrastructure has to be in there to get that, that new code distributed yeah. widely. You know, people are using, significant numbers of people are using 10 year old code in their, yeah. their home routers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, this is a, again, another challenge of our industry is how do we get people to patch stuff and upgrade? And, and it's really difficult. I wish there was a, I mean, I got end of life software issues coming out my ears all over in you know, every company that I've worked in. Um, so I think it's a good point. I think my, my, my kind of ask to authors like this is, you know, it was, and I think Patrick was talking about this in uh, um, last week, which is, you know, we took, took Cisco, we, had, we literally had to lock Cisco in a building to get them to change the default behavior on, on um, IP so source broadcast. Um, by default, turn these stupid things off. And, and make people forced to be, you know, turn them on. So resolve, open resolver, turn it off. You have to turn it on to make it work. That will help in the future. Um, but, you know, we are where we are, and I appreciate the, the, the feedback on that, and, 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 and I'm glad that you are patching it. Um, that's great news. But, you know, I think getting out to your users and saying, by the way, you're at risk, you know, and I'm sure you do that already, is, is, is obviously quite important as well. Keith. I have another comment. Um, there is a project out there called the MIT Spoofer Project. Um, I just put the URL into the, the IRC room, um, which attempts to measure BCP38 deployment. But yep. I've also had people question their methodology. It would be great if we could have more people, researchers or otherwise, measuring BCP38 deployment. So yep. that you, know, you, you, you may recall the weekly CIDR reports, which basically say here are the people who are polluting the default free zone with um, unaggregated groups. Um, it would be kind of nice to be able to name and shame the people that are um, not BCP38 compliant. Yeah. Flex Optics. Um, 
Also, right, uh, Atlas ambassador. Um, there's Told no you. Need, there, there's, there's no need to go to Matt because the Atlas project has a separate list that somebody can raise this um, directly with the developers. Um, or it may be possible to do it as a uh, user defined measurement <coughs> that's available for all. You know, maybe we need to go to D Link and, you know, they've got a button at the press or something where it does a test. Oh, your ISP is unsecure. You know, I hate that kind of stuff personally because it. It makes you do this stuff, but I think we need to do it. So, um, th the other thing is Jan Yorts from ISOC and Go6 um, is busy going around um, discussing with operator groups <coughs> whether there should be something between the operator groups and the ITF that acts for best current practices, and it may be worth bringing yeah. him into meetings like this or other meetings. Yeah. So, uh, yours time, I'm going to come and do a talk telling you how we got on at BT. Um, unless they fire me tomorrow, of course, which uh, you never okay, know. Okay, um, Gavin, and then... And Sorry, yeah, Gavin. It's, uh, it's fine. Um, this is more of a comment rather than a question, so yeah. you, you feel free to step down. I uh, just wanted to mention, uh, as a kind of complementary thing to the issue of closing down open resolvers, um, authoritative DNS servers, which are often kind of unwilling accomplices in DDoS attacks, yeah. um, the, uh, the most popular authoritative name servers, bind, NSD, power DNS and so on, they're all rolling out uh, something called uh, response, response rate limiting, um, which is designed to kind of reduce the damage that can be caused by amplification and reflection attacks. So if you operate authoritative name service, which I'm guessing if you have customer domains, you, you, a lot of you will be, uh, you should be looking at updating your, your distribution, your, your bind uh, NSD platforms, power DNS platforms, to use the more recent versions which have this RL um, patches integrated into them, and it basically um, it means that if you're a victim of a, a spoofing attack, um, you uh, uh, the upstream authority service will stop sending you these spoofed response packets, but you can still send legit queries to them because every now and then you'll get a response, a truncated response, causing you to upgrade to TCP so you can get your answers back. Okay, thank you, Gavin.